Yes, they're all unloaded. So, yeah, they're all pointing at me, but they're all unloaded. So, I have been spending the entire day today working on the picture section of the French rifle book that I'm working on. Um, I have James Rubling, who is the photographer who did all of the awesome Vickers Guide books. He's going to be coming out here in a couple weeks to do hopefully all of the photography for the book, and it's going to be a crap load of photography. Um, so what I've been doing is going through the manuscript and marking, in, indicating exactly where I want every picture or every what every picture is that I plan to have in the book. Then for each one of those, I identify it by chapter and picture number, and then I write out a little hang tag with the number, the chapter, and a you know, brief explanation of what the picture is. And then I assemble all of those, and then I can go through my actual rifles and hang tag, each picture tag gets hung on a particular rifle. So for example, if I want a really good example of a Saint-Étienne receiver mark, well, I've got a picture tag for that, and it'll, you know, somewhere in the Berthier chapter, I want to have each of the different receiver markings. And then I can take that tag, go through the rifles, find the one with the best nice Saint-Étienne marking, hang the tag on that. And then the upshot is, when James gets here, we can go through and every time we grab a rifle, we know exactly which pictures we need to take. So we don't worry, we won't have to worry about forgetting to get pictures or taking a whole bunch of extra pictures that we don't end up needing. And it occurs to me that uh, James doesn't know French rifles nearly as well as I do. And it probably would be a humongous nightmare for him to try and take a bunch of unorganized pictures and sort them into the book without remembering like, oh, is that the 1892A or the 1892N sites? So uh, hopefully this system will help him out with all of that and make this a really nice, smooth project. I'm really excited for this book. Hopefully it'll be out in the spring. Not 100% sure yet, but we're just taking it as we go. At any rate, I thought it'd be cool to just show you guys briefly. Uh, this is the last section of Berthiers that I was going through and doing, and these are all kind of the weird Berthiers. So, starting at this end here, we have this one, which has this unusual thing on the stock. This was like a training rifle. Honestly, I don't have a ton of information about this, but when I found it, it was too cool to pass up. So they did that. They also scrubbed the serial number and remarked it with serial number just 20, which is odd, so that's kind of cool. We have, let's see, this is a Siamese or a Thai army captured Berthier. It's got this chakra mark on the top of the receiver there. So this was captured in Indochina at some point. Uh, and then uh, actually the, the Thai or the Siamese, later Thai armies, uh, army, captured enough uh, French material that they actually kind of standardized some of it and they put their own property markings on it. So that's a really neat one to have. That is also a 1916 pattern carbine without any of the modifications or updates to it because it got lost somewhere in uh, Thailand before the French army had a chance to run its updates. Next, we have two here that are, these are two examples of the same thing. Uh, but they have uh, some are, one of them is better for some pictures, one's better for others. This is a Lebanese uh, single shot 22 caliber conversion of the Berthier. So they plugged uh, the bottom of the, the magazine there. You can see that's plugged off with just a flat metal plate. And you put a 22 rimfire on your loading tray, close the bolt. It's just got this short bolt throw now. That screw acts as the ejector. And uh, so those are kind of cool. Got two of those for various pictures. Next over here, this is a Greek army Berthier. Uh, they received a whole bunch of 1907-15 long rifles as military aid from the French, and they cut a bunch of them down into carbines. So this actually started as a 1907-15 uh, rifle. The Greeks cut it down, which means well, a couple things. The barrel's not the same diameter as a standard carbine. The Greeks put their own front sight on it. They modified this band for their own unique bayonet. And they have a totally different rear sight mounted on here. Actually, it's not quite totally different. They kept the, uh, the sight leaf from the French, but they put their own um, uh, 
range thingy steps on there uh, so that the the ranges on here actually correlate to uh, to the ballistics with this shorter barrel this one is this is actually a standard rifle but it's an unusual one to find this is an m34 this is a Berthier converted in the 30s to uh, 7.5 French so they got rid of the moniker clip loading and they replaced it with a Mauser type five round internal box magazine these are pretty cool um, this was actually like the they had almost as many of these as they had Moss 36 rifles in service when World War One broke out uh, this guy you guys have well some of you have seen before what's cool about this one is this has a French resistance uh, symbol nailed into the stock I can't as I've said before I don't have any hundred percent like real proof that that's what that is uh, but it seems pretty conclusive to me, and uh, I didn't buy it for a particular premium, and I'm not looking to sell it, so I don't really have to prove that to anybody. Uh, and it'll make a really cool addition to the book. And then lastly, we have a pair of Orman 1948 carbines. These are Turkish, and they are marked TC, which is Turkish Republic, Orman 1948. Uh, Orman is Turkish for forestry. Uh, these were carbines that were put together for the Turkish, basically, forest police, rural police, forest rangers. Um, specifically, they, they took a batch of captured Berthiers that they had gotten uh, shortly before World War II, uh, in the late 30s or maybe early 40s. And they wanted to keep using it because they were using those because they were in 8 Labelle, which was a very difficult cartridge to get in Turkey at the time, which meant if some corrupt ranger decided to sell his rifle to criminals, uh, they would have a very hard time getting ammunition for it, and it wouldn't be all that practical. So um, these were actually rebuilt as like mid-length short rifles with Mauser pattern hardware uh, from some Mauser carbines that the Turks had had uh, decommissioned uh, earlier, and they're, they're a really neat uh, addition. And of course I have two of these because one of them has a sling swivel on the side, one of them has a sling swivel on the bottom, which is exactly the sort of minute detail that uh, I want this uh, this book to do a really good job of covering. So that is just a little taste of uh, what we're going to have in just the Berthier chapter. I think this is going to be a really cool book. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. By the way, if you're seeing this sort of thing for the first time and you're wondering what the heck this Apocrypha stuff is, uh, this is actually a little behind-the-scenes channel or behind-the-scenes content that I have uh, started posting a couple times a week, every two or three days, uh, for folks on Patreon who support the channel at the $3 level or more. So if you're interested in seeing some more of this behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, it doesn't cover any really technical gun content. Um, this is about as technical as it gets, and all of this will be covered uh, in their own videos. Some of them already have been. Um, but uh, it's you know, interesting things that are going on. So maybe cool stuff that I've gotten, uh, the occasional cocktail mixing, uh, travel stuff, you name it, just fun behind the scenes work. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that, check out Patreon and sign up for the $3 level and check out Apocrypha. There's a month or two now of uh, back content there that you'll get to see when you sign up. Thanks for watching.